when we have a sound system comprised of multiple elements, we have multiple amplification stages in the signal path. If we start from a microphone, we get a level that ranges from minus 60 dBU to minus 40 dBU. That's about 0.01 to 0.01 volts. That signal goes usually through a preamp that will raise that level to line level. That level is going to be anything between minus 10 dBU and plus 10 dBU, 0.25 to 3 volts. That level should remain throughout the system until we get to the last stage, the amplifier that will raise that level to speaker level. This level can be 1 to 100 volts or even more depending on the sound system. At each of these steps, we have one or more adjustments that will impact our gain structure. With multiple amplification stages, improper settings can reduce the dynamic range of our sound system. Also, if we apply adjustments in the wrong place, we can add noise, saturation, or clipping to our signal. For instance, let's suppose that we have a mixer that has a signal-to-noise ratio of 96 dB and a clipping level of plus 27 dBU. If we draw this on a graph, we can see the range of signals that this mixer can handle. We could do the same thing with the other components in the signal chain. For instance, an equalizer with a signal-to-noise ratio of 110 dB and a clipping level of plus 21 dBU. A limiter with a signal-to-noise ratio of 114 dB and a clipping level also at plus 21 dBU. And an amplifier with a signal-to-noise ratio of 108 dB and a clipping level of plus 3 dB. For the entire system, the maximum level will be the maximum level in any component on that chain. In this case, the amplifier that has a clipping level of plus 3 dB. The lowest usable level is going to be the highest noise floor of any of those components. In this case, the mixer. That level in this case is at minus 69 dB. This is calculated by subtracting the clipping level minus the signal to noise ratio. So without any adjustments, we can see that the dynamic range of this system has been reduced to 72 dB. This is less than the dynamic range of every single component in that signal chain. Setting up proper gain structure has a very simple goal, maximizing the signal-to-noise ratio and maintaining sufficient headroom for signal peaks. The procedure is very simple. First, we need to use a proper signal for calibration, and then we need to follow the signal path. That means we cannot start at the amplifier. We need to start from the first gain stage. At that point, we need to get the signal to operating level as soon as possible. And then we need to maintain that unity gain throughout our system. The last thing that we're going to do is adjust the amplifiers. Throughout the system, we are going to need to use meters to ensure that we're keeping unity gain. The steps to do this are very easy. First, lower or turn off your amplifiers. Then, adjust the input gain for proper operating level. We need to use meters and make certain that the incoming signal is reaching near 0 dB. Then, we need to maintain proper signal through the entire signal chain, maintain unity gain through all processes in that chain. We need to compensate when reducing gain, and we need to use meters wherever it's needed. Lastly, we're going to adjust the amplifier attenuators for proper listening level. But why do we adjust amplifiers last? Amplifiers have the smallest headroom in the audio chain and it's normally 3 dB. The reason is that amplifiers are specified using a 1 kHz sine wave. Sine waves have a crest factor of 3 dB. That means that the peak level is 3 dB above the RMS level. The other thing to keep in mind is that amplifier level controls are not volume controlled. They are attenuators. If we start by turning the amplifiers to the maximum, that means no attenuation, two things can happen. The input signal would be too high, forcing us to lower the incoming signal and feeding more noise into the amplifier, or signals running at 0 dB RMS will cause saturation at the amplifier, as the amplifier cannot handle signals that are 3 dB above that 0 dBU. When we're setting our gain structure, we can start by adjusting the input gate for proper operating level. The best way to do this is using peak meters at the input. Then we adjust the gain until the peak indicator starts to flash, this usually happens 3 or 6 dB before actual clipping, that is depending on the system specifications. Then, reduce that gain by 6 to 12 dB to provide additional headroom. Throughout the system, maintain unity gain by maintaining faders and mixers at 0 dB, and compensating level where needed. Mm -hmm.